Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and this podcast is all about Imagine Wealth Without Risk. Now, this is all about making less risk and making more money, and that's what everybody wants. So we're going to talk about safe, secure tax lien certificates and tax deeds on this podcast. But my guest today is Bill Williams, and uh, he's just had a recent experience that I want you guys to know about because he's had a lot of experience buying tax lien certificates, especially the past few years. Now, I don't want to steal his thunder, but Bill, are you on there okay? I am. Oh, good. Okay. Welcome aboard and glad to have you again. And let's just start right out with you asking questions. I'm going to ask you questions about the auction. You went and was it a big auction, small auction? What was it? I went in my home county and the auction... The initial list was somewhere around 15,000 properties were having tax lien certificates sold on them. I see. And after redemptions, there was probably over 10,000 that went to auction. 10,000. Wow. That was a lot to choose from. That was pretty good then, right? It was. I bid on quite a few of those 10,000 too. Oh, you did. Okay. Take me through that uh, whole process, if you will, and I'll try not to interrupt because this is so interesting for the client. Let me do a quick reminder. For those of you that might have just come to our podcast, a tax lien certificate is a result from someone not paying their tax. In other words, a property owner does not pay the tax. And so some of the states are very benevolent, like Florida. And Bill and I are talking from Florida today. A state like Florida is benevolent. And they say, oh, look, we're not going to take your house away. We're going to issue a tax certificate. So anybody can buy one of those. And what you're buying is you're actually buying a piece of paper, but it has an interest rate attached to it. So I'm going to let Bill run with it, and then we'll make some uh, discussions as we go, because I don't want him to miss anything. This is so good and so important for all of you to learn. Florida is a state that holds almost every county, if not every county, holds their tax lien certificate auction online. And so you can do 100% of everything you need to do to buy a, a tax lien certificate online. That includes registering for the auction. And to register for the auction, you have to provide your contact information, your banking information, and you have to provide a deposit. And the deposit is a total of 10% of what you are planning to bid, your maximum bid. So if my maximum bid is $50,000, I have to put a $5,000 deposit down. So in advance of the auction, I did that. And so I put $5,000 down and registered. And then I went through the list and the list was, as I said, it was not full 15,000 properties. It was less. And I went through the properties and selected those that I was interested in placing a bid on. I see. Now, you might say 10,000 properties, that's impossible. How can I go through 10,000 properties and bid on that many? And those of you who've listened to Ted's training, when you're buying a property, so if you're buying a tax deed, or a tax lien certificate with the intent of getting the deed, you're supposed to go look at the property. But in Florida, you're not getting the property if the tax lien certificate is not paid. You are just buying the loan, the debt on the property. So okay, I got it. So you just bought a, a debt certificate, like buying what, a, a bond or something like that? Very similar to a government bond, except by instead of being backed by the government so much, it's backed by the property enforced by the government. Uh -huh. So if the property, and just as a quick side note, as if the property doesn't get paid in Florida, I as the tax lien certificate holder after two years, I can go to the county and say, I want to bring this, have you bring the county, bring this property to a tax deed sale where they sell the property and then I get my money back. Wow, this is almost uh, like having a partnership with the government, huh? And they do all the work. Yeah, so, yeah, that's good. Now, back to the tax lien certificates. In Florida, the auctions, in as far as I know, every county, are held by a private auction company, which does an excellent job of managing that auction effort. And so you can sort on different criteria and decide which properties you want to look at and bid on. So you're not looking at 
10,000 is overwhelming. I didn't look at 10,000 properties. I used this search and sort program they have to limit the number of properties I look at that met my criteria. For example, if a property only had was worth $1,000, I said, I don't want to deal with this because the value is too low to make it worth a worthwhile investment oh, for me. Oh, sure. Because if you got it, you wouldn't want a $1,000 property. Right. Because yeah. my costs of dealing with a $1,000 right. property would exceed its value. Right. So I, am, I eliminated very low value properties. I also eliminated properties I couldn't afford. If the taxes due on the property was $56,000, I just oh. told you my limit was $50,000. I didn't. Do, do they have properties one. with 56000 in tax? Yep. You, what would that were, be? Is that the hotel or uh, something? Oh, yeah. A hotel, a, a mall. A, and surprisingly, oh. some of these corporations, for whatever reason, don't pay their taxes on time. Ah. So I went through and pared the list down to the properties I was interested in bidding on. Some of them, I could do an automated bid. And on others, I actually did some more research and did a more detailed search on that property to determine if I wanted to bid on it and what interest rate I want to bid on it. Okay, I don't want so to. This is not an auctioneer now standing up there reading a three five three by five card like I used to go to the auction and they read off a number and you had to raise your hand. You're not doing that. No, as a matter of fact, to go back to that subject again, 20 years ago, and it was 20 years ago yes. last month that you brought me to my first auction, and we sat in the audience and they auctioned those properties one at a time. Can you imagine 15,000 10, property, 10,000 liens being auctioned one at a time? It yeah. took days to do this. In it fact, Cook, in Cook County, it used to take 100 days just to do the auction. Unbelievable. Yeah. It didn't take 100. It was 100,000 certificates, and it took them 35 days. They had to, someone had to read all day long. Yeah. I don't remember how many days. I think it was more than, it was more than two, at least three, the right. very first auction I went to with you. Exactly. And this auction, same county, yeah. took two days and they auctioned, oh, several thousand to maybe 3,000 or so certificates off in each block. And they oh. did nine blocks over a two day period, separated by two hours. Wow. This is really interesting. So, what they would do is they would, we'd submit our bids and then they would process all those bids and of course, limit each bidder to whatever deposit they had put down or whatever their bid limit was, and then award the bids to that block of bidders that who bid on that particular block, and then it, they'd move on to the next block. And so every two hours, a new block of tax lien certificates would close out, and a new block would be. Okay. Created. So take us back to that criteria that you started saying that you can select a criteria of what you want. Because you had 50000 Is that what you had? I had 50000 to invest. Okay. And so my criteria for one set that many people use is they're looking for properties that are, I was too, likely to redeem. Because I was looking for an interest rate return. I was nice. looking for, not to own the property in this case, I was looking to get a return on my investment. So redeem so, means that the people are going to come in and pay the taxes and you're going to get paid. So that's what you wanted. Okay. What I did was, let me take an example from last year, just because this oh, okay. is a, this is my oh, favorite. Did this last year too? You did I last did this year. a year ago. And yeah. so one of the certificates that I was the winning bidder on last year, and I was very pleased with this, yeah. was, was a certificate, I'm going to use round numbers here, that was worth $10,000. Oh. So this was a very nice residential home that uh -huh. for whatever reason they did not pay their taxes and the certificate went for sale i paid ten thousand dollars and all i had to do was then after i was the winning bidder was electronically transfer the money that i had bid above my deposit so i had at that time put a deposit down just like this year i had to pay an additional roughly twenty thousand dollars to get the certificates I had purchased last year. Uh -huh. And then this particular certificate, I bid one quarter percent on. All right, why would Wait anybody do that? How does that work out? And in Florida, there's a rule yeah. that 
the minimum return on investment, if you bid a quarter percent or more, you can get up to 18% in Florida. Oh. But if you bid a quarter percent or more, the minimum return you get is 5%. I paid a I, I bid a quarter percent on this $10,000 certificate. And then about two and a half months later, I get an email that says that certificate has redeemed and the money has been transferred to your account. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even get like you used to get a piece of paper. I just got an email that said the money was transferred to my account. Okay, this sounds all good now, but hold on a second because I'm not sure everybody's gonna get it. Okay, so there was a certificate for 10,000 and normally you could just raise your hand online or something like, and bid and the maximum on that certificate would be 18, but it kept getting bid down or you just bid it down to a quarter percent. Is that what you did? Yes, it's a, so it's a quarter a, percent and you bid a quarter percent because you knew what? I knew the minimum return was 5%, not interest rate, a 5% minimum return, which meant in my case, that certificate redeemed in two and a half months and I got 5% return or $500 on my $10,000 investment in two and a half months. Wow. Annual, annualize that. Wow. Wow, that's, that's huge. 5% return on investment. Wow. That's where, so amazing. It's amazing. Where can you get 25% return on your investment in two and a half months? Oh, yeah. Annualized. Yeah. Okay. Now, t does everybody know to do that or is it uh, uh, commonplace or what? Yes, in Florida, the educated investor absolutely knows that because if you follow the, the kinds of properties now that we were going back to the criteria I put in to get to find those properties, that particular property was a, a high value homesteaded properties. Homesteaded means that the owner lives on the property and those kinds of properties almost never go to a tax deed sale, meaning they almost all redeem, all, almost all, pay off plus interest or the penalty before they would ever go to a tax deed sale. So this is a very passive investment. The investor, just like me, had to do nothing but select the property, be the winning bidder, pay for the property, and then just sit and wait for my money to come in. And, and how I, much money did you actually invest? That year I invested a little over $23,000. I see. But what about and on this one that you paid a quarter percent? What did you, and how much money did you invest? That was a $10,000 investment. Actually, it was 9600 blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, blah, okay. So $10,000, but you made $500 in two months. Correct. Well, nice, and okay. Now, oh, yeah. there is competitive bidding on that, and there were multiple bidders who bid a quarter percent. Oh, what happens there is there's a computer random selection that oh. picks the winner out of all the bidders. I now, see. Okay. Fortunately, right. I was the winning bidder on that one. I was the one selected. Nice. Nice. Okay. And so you put maybe 20% of your portfolio right away just in that one bid. That's right. Nice. Nice. Now, is there enough of these for everybody? Like I said, there were 10,000. And let me, this year it worked a little bit differently. Yeah. And uh, my results, rather, the system worked the same, but I, yeah. my results were a little different. Yeah. Uh, this year, my maximum was $50,000, and I bid on, oh, by some of it automatic bidding and some of them individual bidding, like I described, I would dig down a little deeper on some of them. I bid on roughly 5,000 certificates. I well, was, that was half of that was available. Pretty much, yes. Wow. And, I was the winning bidder on, I think, 71 of those certificates. So I got oh, quite a few. Really? My average interest rate on those 71 certificates was 12%. Not bad. And so I got well above that quarter percent that I got last year. Right. And we'll see, and none of them have redeemed yet the auction just I just paid for them last week, so they, it's quick for any of them to have redeemed. But I want them to redeem quickly because then I get all my money back and I can another auction. Great. Right. All right. 
So, so, so you're pretty happy with that. What's some of the things, what are some of the takeaways that you might want to tell people? One of the things that has happened is uh, everything in most states for tax lien certificates, most of the auctions are now online, which helps the investor a lot because it is very easy to research these properties online. And of course, it's very easy to bid. That is the good part. On the negative side, there's a lot of competition now because it's so easy to do. Yeah. So there are techniques and there are, like I said, this filtering technique to help you select the properties that you'd be most interested in bidding on. Other more sophisticated techniques that are a little bit more complex to get into at the, than we should get into at this time right. that allow you to have an edge over the, oh, in my case, I think there was just under 100 bidders at the auction. But you would see more than 100 bids on a particular property. Wow. Uh, what is happening is a bidder can register with the same primary bidder number, but a bidder name and number, but sub bidders under him or her. Oh, that's a little complex. Yeah. All right. Tell me some of the other takeaways that you might have had. Can anybody do this? It take you six months to learn how to do it or uh, a week or two? Or what do you think? It takes you no time to really go through the website and learn how to bid and make your deposit and register and all that. The trick is, and what has taken me a little bit of time to learn, is how to select properties, the best properties to bid on. And as an example, like I said, I got $32,000. I don't know if I said that, but I got $32,000 worth of liens and the winning bidder on 71 of them with an average interest rate of 12%. And that's in a market where almost every, I shouldn't say almost every, the majority of the liens that were sold at this auction went for a quarter percent. Wow. So I knew something the average investor did not know that allowed me to get an average interest rate of 12% where almost everybody else was getting a quarter percent. Not that's bad because as I described, if it redeems quickly, it's you probably very well. why you're the coach, too, because you know a little bit more than the average guy, right? <laughs> I hope so, because yeah, I, I got to show everybody up. You're pretty humble. You don't have to be that humble. It's okay. People like to associate with people that know what the hell they're doing, and that's why we're doing all this. Yeah, great stuff. That's good. What other messages would you like to pass on? The biggest thing I think that I learned was that the first time I went to an auction, I really didn't know how it worked, and you, after we had known each other for about a year, you literally took me to an auction. I had right. somebody figuratively hold my hand for right. anybody who wants to know yeah. we never held yeah. hands yeah. and show me the ropes and show me how it worked. Right. And uh, actually the first time I went to an auction, I was very nervous. Yeah. This is 20 years Every, ago. Everybody is. It's amazing because you're spending money and you're not sure of yourself. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. now, and I only invested $670 or something the very first uh, tax yeah. lease. And market. now you show up with 50 grand. That's a big yeah. change in a few years. And it's not, and there's no butterflies anymore. It's a very... Okay, uh, so let me see if I can figure this out. You invested about 30000 and it looks like you're going to make about 12% on that. Uh, yeah. So there's a good chance you could make uh, $3,000 or so this year for sitting in your office. And how many hours did you work to, to do that? It probably took, oh, 20 hours or so to go through it. But I went through in excruciating detail because yeah. I was going for those 12%. Because engineers do that, right? Yeah. Excruciating detail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could the uh, average guy make three or five grand a year doing this? With the right selection, the right knowledge? Absolutely. Yeah. And not have to go to a lot of auctions. They can stay home and do it, right? Yep. It's a very safe, passive investment. Can I put a a senior citizen in front of a computer for 10 hours with one of my assistants and turn them loose and they're going to be able to do it? I did that with my sister a few years ago. I yeah. uh, probably eight years ago now. She had some retirement money she wanted to invest and I did precisely that. We got her a tax lien certificate that I think paid 17% and it was as simple as I described is wow. we just were very selective about looking for ones that not everybody was bidding on. So this was yeah. not like, one that was getting bid like. down to a quarter percent. We got yeah. a 17% certificate and she yeah. 
held that for about a year and made 17%. I had a question about one of your former students, which, which I always enjoyed because I saw a picture afterwards, but you also uh, teach people how to buy tax deed properties too, right? Yes, absolutely. There's, okay. there's a little more involvement, but a lot more profit. Yeah. Potential. Okay. So one of the pictures I can't forget is this gal with her arms straight up in the air like this, standing on a vacant lot. And her name was Josie. And she was from Quebec City in Canada. Can you tell me that story? Yeah, she went to one of your buying tours yeah. in, in Texas yeah. and went to a county outside of Dallas. Yeah. And so she didn't go to the, the big city where there were a lot of bidders and a lot of competition. She went just outside the city and uh, she found a building lot in a developing neighborhood. Nice. Uh, a nice developing neighborhood that had yeah. an average, uh, the properties in that area had an average selling price and the $76,000 range. And that particular property sold at auction for $42,000. And in Texas, the rule is that on a property like that, if it is not paid, if the property taxes are not paid by the delinquent property tax owner, yeah. within six months after that tax certificate is sold, that tax deed certificate is sold, yeah. then the buyer of that certificate in this case, Josie, would get the full rights and deed to that property. Wow. So after six months, she got the deed to the property, full ownership, and she listed that property through with a real estate agent and sold it for about a $30,000 profit. $30,000, are you kidding? That was in roughly between the time she bought it and the time she sold it, I think it was under nine months. Boy, I bet she was a happy camper. That's why she was on that. I saw this woman standing on a muddy lot with her hands up like she had done a touchdown. I thought, wow, she's a happy camper. So that's why, huh? Yep. As a matter of fact, I found out she had sold it. When we were at one of your workshops, she called me on my cell phone and she was all excited. She was about to uh, close the deal on that property. I'll bet she was a happy camper. It all worked out very well for her. I bet I did. Do you want to know something? We just used up all our time. Once again, I'd like to thank you. You did a great job and this is very informative and all the clients that are on this podcast, I'm sure they learned a lot, but if they didn't, they can always ask us questions later or listen to the next podcast. So thank you again for your time and I look forward to seeing you soon. Great. Thanks, Ted. Hi, it's Linda. If you have any questions, just email info at tedthomas.com. That's info at tedthomas.com. Watch your inbox and you'll get an answer within 24 to 48 hours from Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. My guest today is Jeff Dubay. Okay, okay, but I'll say it right. If he'll correct me when I don't. So welcome. I'm glad to have you guys back on the call. And uh, Jeff is really a talented person. And you're really going to hear that come out in the next few minutes. Uh, he's not only successful in the fixer upper business, but he's successful in the rental business. And now he's been successful in the tax lien and deed business. So he's going to tell us a little bit about that. But before we get to all of his great things, Jeff, tell us a little bit about you and your family and who you are and things like that. And then we'll get to all that nitty gritty of stuff about making money. Cause I know you're a money making guy, but tell us a little bit about your family and what you do. Yes, sir. And I appreciate you having me on and hey to everybody out there. Me, my wife, my daughter, we live here in Jacksonville, Florida and have been pretty fortunate on in our, in our careers. We've bought and sold properties. Probably we did that full time for probably 10 or 12 years. And then we got in and, and did a little bit with an RV rental business, did that for a number of years. That was pretty successful, pretty fun. And then we eased back, slowed down a little bit, and we're in the tax deed business now. And we, we couldn't be more happy, all of us, on this. That's end. nice. That's nice. Now, do you have some kids? How many kids do you have? Yeah, I got one, one eight-year-old, Brianna, and she's just the, the smartest, sweetest little girl I've ever met. Oh, listen to you. You're not prejudiced or anything. No, not at all. Not at all. But she is. She's, a, she's pretty amazing. You'll girl. meet her one day. Oh, man. You'll meet her one day, Ted, and you'll say the same I thing. I hope I do. I hope I do. I love to hear people talk like that. That's good. Good for, good for you. All right. So okay. now you've been in all these other businesses, and this is really interesting because I get a lot of clients that are just starting out 
with these tax lien certificates and tax deeds. So when they hear from you, they're going to get the real nitty gritty. So you actually actually weren't able to come to my last event where I wanted to showcase you because you are fixing up your own property. So you actually do this work yourself, right? Yeah, I've been working on, uh, we've let them go, to be honest with you. Turned a blind eye to them and they uh, got a little in worse shape than, than they should be. And yeah. I've been over there busting my hump, getting them nice and pretty again uh-huh. and getting the, rent, getting the rents where they need to be. Oh, so you actually know how to fix up properties? Yeah, I, right, so I, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so, okay. Actually, I wanna ask you a little bit about that. So you picked a business that everybody talks about, but from the outside, and I see all these infomercials. I say, buy one of these properties, just rent it, and you're going to get rich real quick. But I didn't, we didn't plan this interview, but tell us the real truth. I know you're a hardworking guy if you're not only buying rentals, but you're fixing them and taking care of them. So tell us a little bit about that business. Yeah, it's a, I think it's the most tried and true way for, to make self-made millionaires in the U.S. for probably a long time. But it's not an overnight thing at all. It takes a long time and many years of principal pay down appreciation, the ups and downs of markets. And if you do it a long time, you'll have plenty of stories. So many of them, you won't remember half of them. But it's a tough business, but it's a long-term business. Okay. Now, now, but we, we use management companies, and uh, that's, oh. that's a big benefit. I see. Okay. So you got out of the day-to-day, and you let someone else handle the management of it? Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how long have you been doing this? We've owned rental properties close to 20 years now, probably. Wow. I come from the apartment business. I owned uh, 4,000 apartments at one time in my life. And I heard you talk about them before. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. It takes a long time to get those babies to cash flow. Now, I'm not saying they don't make money. They get some money in, but unfortunately, it always has to go. Uh, you get it in, but it, it goes back into the property. Realistically, how long does it take before you can settle down, hire a manager, and whatever? What's realistic in that business? We had the benefit. We used to buy and, and sell a lot of properties. Really used to, you know, we didn't buy and hold a whole lot, but we kind of cherry picked the best deals along the way. A little apartment building or community here. We, we cherry picked the best deals, and we always worked in our numbers management right out of the gate. Luckily, I've never managed any other rentals, but. I couldn't imagine dealing with tenants on a daily basis. I couldn't even imagine it. But it's a, like I said, it's a long-term business. It's not something you're going to get rich quick on. It's you got to put some years into it really to, to start benefiting. Okay. So when you say years, if, if five years, seven years, 10 years, what do you think? I'd say 10 years plus, depending on how good uh, a deal you get when you buy your properties, how much cash flow they get out of the gate, if any. But it, it takes a long time. Oh, yeah. So you have to work hard for your money. It's not, it's depicted on television or something like that. You just, it's just a hard work and then you have to build and really put your time in and then it's a good business. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like I now you changed over and you heard about these tax liens and even that business isn't perfect. If you watch a television infomercial, you know, it sounds like you're always getting rich quick, but you started going to these tax auctions and they all don't work out perfectly. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, surprising. You can't ever pick which one you're going to do good at and which one you're going to blank at. Just this last auction I was at a few weeks ago, very competitive. There were very few auctions in Georgia last month and very competitive. I guess all those investors only had a couple different auctions to go to. Very competitive, the auction I went to, and I do very thorough research prior to the auction. And one of the one of the four properties came up that I was going to bid on, and I was the first bid and the only bid where all the rest of the properties I bid on just went nearly twice as high as what I was willing to go. I'm not sure why other people passed over the deal that there was nothing wrong with it. But yeah, it's highs and lows. You can't ever tell what's going to happen at an auction. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. So now you bought at, you, you bought one at the auction. You had a lot of uh, competition. And you know, t- Tell me about uh, a little bit of, about the auction. Is there a lot of people there? Just a few people there? What, 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 what should they plan on? And it varies how big the town is and whatever else, but there's normally anywhere from 40 to maybe 100 people at these auctions. And it seems like from what I've seen and, and talking to Bob and a couple other people, maybe 15 to 20, maybe 25% at most of these people are actually bidding. Most people are just standing there watching and I don't know if they just want to try oh, to yeah. figure out how it works or just to say they went to the auction. Yeah. Okay. Tell me, you don't you didn't you say you lived in Jacksonville, Florida? Yes, sir. That's correct. Oh, what? I think there's a million people in Jacksonville. Am I pretty close? <laughs> it's over a million. I remember that. 
uh, them, them saying we breached that probably 10 years ago or so. Oh, they did. So they went by. I mean, so they have auctions there, don't they? Why, why would you go to Georgia? Yes. For one thing, there are online auctions here in Jacksonville. And the experience that I had in real estate, I had my percentages and, and my equations that I buy properties at to be profitable. And I used some of those uh, equations when I first started attending these online auctions here in Duval County. Uh-huh. And I just couldn't believe how far past my uh, high bid the every single property was going. So way too competitive for me. The prices are way too high. It's uh-huh. not worth investing if you're paying that much for properties. Not on my view. All right. So you have an advantage. You're a good businessman and you you have experience at that. But so, so you're right. saying that there's some auctions, the prices just go way too high. Is that a good evaluation? That is. And I'd say two or three months ago in uh, one I went to in Georgia, that was not too far. It was a county or two away from Atlanta. Same thing. Every single property I was going to bid on went for more than twice. Some of them were three times what I was willing to pay my high bid. So wow. yeah, very competitive. Uh, it can be in, in Georgia or wherever you go, but that, that was the reason I migrated to Georgia. It's not too far from where I live, but also uh, I would assume the competition it has been a, a good bit less. Okay. So every auction isn't just a great deal. Some of them are really pretty darn competitive. Yes. Uh, were, you, were you nervous at these auctions? Or you, how do you feel about them? Uh, for sure. From the beginning, I, I still do. You know, it's uh, whether it's excitement, uh, nervous jitters, I don't know what it is, but there's definitely excitement when they happen. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, I still definitely, uh, I'd say I get nervous. And do you have a guideline that you follow when you're at the auction? Like you'll pay, like I tell people, try to get them around 20 cents on the dollar if you can, but uh, certainly don't go above 30. But uh, what do you think? You, you, you're, now, I know you've done many. You could tell us how many you did and how, what's your criteria? My criteria changes whether a house is vacant or if it's occupied, what condition it's in, how far delinquent. There's a number of different things that, that figure in to decide which category I put it in and how high a percentage that I will pay. But you, you got to be careful. You don't want to pay too much for sure. And uh, yeah. a lot of times you just you sit there and go to an auction, do all this work, and everybody bids so high. You just sit back and don't do anything and, and leave without anything. But that's better than paying too much for something. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that. I have people call me. They say, you're crazy. Every property went for 35 cents on the dollar. I said, you didn't buy any of them. They say, no, I'm not paying that. I said, good, just keep that attitude. And you'll be okay. You might miss at the auction, but you'll still have your money. Some of those other guys who pay too much, they're not going to be able to sell them. They're going to have a tough time. At least that's my opinion. Interesting. Yeah. I traveled around to some Florida auctions before I really dug my feet in in Georgia. And the same thing. It was still high. Everywhere I went was pretty darn high as far as the bid amounts. Okay. So some states are really high. Other states are more reasonable then. So you, in other yeah. words, it, it's a skill then, isn't it? It is to figure out where to go and, and what fits your criteria. Yeah. And how many deals have you done? Uh, I believe it's 13 or 14. I've, oh, wow. Uh, You've done a lot. Okay. In, in what period of time? Uh, a year, a little over a year. Oh, so you're buying one a month. I, I'd say you're doing pretty darn good. That's about, yep, about the equivalent of one a month or so. Wow. Uh, I've had plenty of months where I'm blanking, but I've had a, a couple of good months as well. Kind of make up okay. for it. All right. So sometime you go to the auction and get to more than one, maybe two or three, something like that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's nice. Tell me about the people that go to these auctions. They're looking for a, a better than average return. So you have had real estate experience for these 20 years. And so you know that if you don't buy, you're going to get be challenged. So you're buying them mm-hmm. right. What kind of what kind of return do you look at for it? Do you do it annually? Or are you thinking about over the long term with these tax properties? What do you think? I'm really just looking for wherever I can place my money to get the highest return. Georgia's pretty darn good. It's 20%. And then if you get the property, it, it should be as long as you bid correctly and chose your property correctly more than that. Texas, I would really love to bid in Texas. It's just so far away. There's a number of advantages when you compare Texas to uh, to Georgia as far as the percentages and time frames and all. But 20% anywhere in my book is a, a pretty darn good number. And it, it's a pretty passive investment once you, uh, once you get the auction done and, and completed and purchase the property. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that passive investment stuff? Yeah, for the Georgia, the the first year you can't do anything once you uh, purchase the uh, the tax deed. So if the people end up redeeming and paying you back the twenty percent plus your investment, there's really hardly anything you do other than send an email or two to them and tell them what they owe. When you get the property, that that's going to be a lot more involved then if you end up foreclosing on the property and taking ownership. But at the same time, that's it's still it's much more passive than rehab, which we used to do a lot of, which is, ugh, 
a lot of effort, a lot of dealing with a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of contractors that don't do their uh, work, and then you have to go back and do it over mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Sure. What I do when I'm speaking to groups or like I'm on this podcast, I tell people, if you buy in Georgia, the minimum return is 20%. And But you said you make 20%. So we said the same thing, but you said, but you don't do anything that first year. So what does that mean you don't do anything? You have to sit back and, and wait a year to see if the people pay you back your 20% return, or if they don't, after the year passes by, then you hire an attorney and, and do a legal process. But if they pay you back in the first year, there's hardly anything you do. Kind of right. see the check back in the mail once you tell them what, you, what they owe you. Now, that sounds almost like a tax lien then, doesn't it? You buy it and you get paid in the first year, you foreclose, right? They, it's treated like a tax lien in yeah. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're actually going to a tax DCL. Did you actually get a, a deed or anything like that to the property? You do. Yes, the deed okay. goes in your name. Wow. Okay, so that's good. All right. Tell me about the evaluation process because if you're not going to, you don't get to go look inside them, or do you? Not normally. No. Okay. All right. So are most of these houses occupied or on? unoccupied or do you do more than uh, houses? Do you do anything else? Houses oh, yeah. and vacant land. But the, the vacant land is extremely safe. You don't have to worry about a structure. It's a little less worrisome property for if you do win and, and get the property. Can you tell me a little bit how you evaluate those? Yes. Yep. If it's a single family home, you want to look at it uh, as best you can from the exterior. As far as if it's occupied or, or not occupied, if it's not occupied, you, you've got to figure out uh, how far you're willing to go as far as if you want to walk onto the property and look at it or not. But it's a, a, a beware yourself if, if that's what you do. If the property's a long way from, from the street, I have a pair of binoculars where you can see it real well. It's surprising how, how much you can see when you look through binoculars at a house. You can really see <laughs> WBO problems and other things. But uh, you, can, you just have to guesstimate. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm laughing because when you say you look through the binoculars, that, that, that kind of clears your vision up real quick, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It brings that house much closer like you're right up next to it a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you, you, can, you just have to guess on the interior condition of it. But I assume most of the time that uh, it, the interior normally will kind of match the exterior. If it's well kept, I assume it's, it's well kept inside. I'm, I'm still going to have a very safe bid number regardless if it were not in good shape. But. I assume the exterior and interior normally match, match one another. Oh, that's a good, that's a good uh, way to do it. If the exterior is on the rough, you think the inside is going to be on the rough. Okay, good. Yep. I got it. Okay, that's good advice. Okay. All right. Now, it seems to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm just guessing, that you came into the business, found properties you could fix up or you could wholesale, and you learned that business. You, made a, you really made a go of it because now you have – uh, properties like that that produce nice cash flow. So uh, I know you're a cash flow guy, so that's good. But that takes quite a while. Is it different in the tax lien and deed business? Uh, yeah, especially uh, depending on where you buy. It, it would be really nice. I'm a little over a year into this and haven't really got a whole lot of paydays. But if I were to buy somewhere where you get the deed immediately, you know, get ownership and can turn the house real quick, then it can be cr uh, pretty quick money. Me dealing in Georgia, it's it's not the, the big money's not quick. You got to own it a year, then go through a process, legal process. Yeah, it can take a little time that way, but it's a much quicker business as far as making money in cash flow than a long-term rental business. Okay, you're a very conservative guy from my perspective, and mm -hmm. you said a few minutes ago you did 13 deals. Man, 13 deals—that's a lot of deals in one year. So what kind of return do you anticipate if all of these properties pay you off? What kind of money will you make? I've been redeemed on a couple and I had a little over 200 K in them. So uh, I guess that would be in the uh, 40 to $50,000 range, which it, that's really, that's not that big a payday, but uh, I would assume a good bit of these, I'm going to end up uh, taking ownership of on and and selling them and making a lot more money so it's just a mix i don't worry too much about the end result i just want to make sure i place my money in a, in a good property that's safe and whatever happens from there happens if, if i end up getting ownership great if not then i get my money back quicker and, and move it on to another one nice you got a good attitude really good attitude so your worst case on the two hundred thousand invested is you'll make 20 percent. is that your worst case yes mm -hmm. wow boy i bet it wasn't always that way in the fixer upper business no, every now and then you actually wouldn't make money in a fixer-upper business. You'd lose money on a property. Those are few and far between, but yeah. um, 
Well, plus, let me tell you the challenge I had. Uh, let me tell you the mistakes I made. Mistakes I made were I bought a fixer upper, and let's say I thought I could fix it for 25. And so you tell me what it really cost me because you already did it. <laughs> it really cost me yeah. 50. It cost me 50. <laughs> oh my God. Yep. All right. So now I know he had the money tying it up when I bought it, but now I got another 50 in it. Oh my goodness. I'm starting to sweat out. Where am I going to be? Because I'm going to run out of cash. Uh, I bet you never yeah, did. They can eat cash. Yeah, yeah, I did plenty of that. Oh. Yeah, there's a miscellaneous, when you're figuring out the rehab cost oh. of a house, there's a miscellaneous category, oh. and it seemed like over the years that miscellaneous percentage may have gone up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought a few roofs that I didn't think I was going to have to buy. I really did. Yeah. It, oh, that roof really looked good to me. But boy, when the yep. home inspector came to when I, oh, you got to have a new roof and you got a deal, right? Oh, my God. And then yep. I had to make a deal because I was running out of cash. Oh, my God. Yep. So, needed that payday. Yeah, yeah. I, boy, that's that was pretty painful. I, you don't have to tell me, but maybe you do the same thing. But I found out that the, the fixer-upper business was not easy. But if you had a ton of cash, you could make it through. But even after making it through, then the taxes caught up with you because it took you so long to get done. I know that yeah. business, too. So this 20% mm -hmm. return deal is not bad at all because it's uh, pretty passive then, isn't it? Exactly, yep. Okay. All right. I know, and uh, my clients will learn this as they hear more of my podcast, but there's about uh, four or five of these states that actually have these redeemable deeds. And so what you did is you bought a redeemable deed. So the person can come in and redeem it, meaning they can come in and pay you, but they have to pay you a minimum of 20%. Is that pretty close? That's correct. 20% on top of whatever money you paid for it okay. at the auction. Okay, so that's good. Overall, you're, you're grading this thing. If you did 13 deals, I'm going to say you did pretty well. Do you see yourself getting better at it, or is this going to be steady now, or what's your thought process on that? Yeah, I, I see myself getting getting better. If you don't get better at anything you do, I don't know where you're going, but figuring out better where to go, where not to go as far as competition. And I went to one auction and found out where the, the local county pulled almost every property themselves and the people hadn't even paid the, the taxes. That's not a county I want to visit again. Yeah. Oh, so they just decided they weren't going to auction them? Is that what they did? Yeah. Yeah. At the, uh, at the end, it was pretty pretty surprising. The morning of the auction, I didn't have a single property left to bid on my sheet and went and talked to them. And I don't know if the lady should have told me what she told me, but it, it sounded like they, they pulled the properties themselves. They weren't paid or redeemed from the, the taxpayer prior to the, the auction. They just pulled them themselves. I don't know if they'll if they were just bluffing, trying to scare the people to get them to pay their taxes, but pretty frustrating when you spend all that time and effort, nothing even comes to the auction for you to bid on. What about the taxpayers that they not like one guy okay. doesn't have to pay and they have to pay. They don't like that. They'd, they'd be pretty upset. Yeah, about that's, that. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not fair. Yeah. 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 So give me a little comparison. Now I've got about five minutes left, so just take your time. Give me a little comparison with the different businesses, because you're a really experienced guy. You're in the rental business, you did well. You did well in the fixture upper business, then you're into those, you take care of them yourself. And now this business, how do the different ones uh, compare with each other? We just have uh, a few different streams of income coming in from a, a, a few things that we do. And uh, this being one of them, it, it just takes one week a, uh, one week a month for us um, when it's producing a, a pretty decent cash flow. But Comparison-wise, it, it's a pretty darn good return, um, pretty good uh, investment for the time allotted that it takes you to do it. Especially if these people redeem, you're making 20%, and once the auction's done, there's hardly anything to do. My Our RV rental business is, uh, is fairly profitable as well as far as the same thing. Once you deliver the RV and set it up, it kicks out a pretty good bit of cash, and there's not much involved afterwards. So. I think we're trying to figure out how to how to spend our time doing as little as we can and having these little businesses on the side kick out some money for us. I'll bet as soon as you get this all nailed down, you figure out another business. I know what, you know, in the back of your head, you're thinking all the time about what kind of deal you can make next, I'm sure. All right, let me let me speculate a little bit. I've got 200,000. I'm a new person to this podcast, but I got a couple of hundred thousand bucks. So if I learned mm -hmm. how to do this in Georgia, or Texas, or Indiana, or one of those places, could I make a 20% return on my 200000 every year? Yes. Yes. Yep. And that'd be comfortable. I'd, and could I do that work in a week, a month, or would it take more than that? Uh, that that's what it takes for me. And I feel like I'm fairly thorough. I would say, yeah, that's definitely reasonable to think that. 
Okay, but I'll have to get some binoculars so I can get up close to the house. <laughs> hey, remember the la- remember the ladder that's in the back of the. Oh, trophy. I didn't want to say that, but you said it. Okay, <laughs> I heard you say that ladder story. I roared with laughter when I heard that. I said uh, I didn't want to say it in front of the group because you were in front of a group. But I wished I had that damn ladder a few times because I bought I know it for it. those houses. Oh shit! Oh, pardon me. <laughs> the, I had to pay for those roofs, so I know what you're talking about. Oh, geez. I can't yeah. say I can't tell you the last time I pulled that ladder out of the back of the truck, but it's darn sure in the back of the truck every oh, single time. Man. Oh man! Yeah, after you buy <laughs> a twelve thousand or twenty thousand dollar roof, and that was always a roof that had something going on under under the shingles, right? Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. and I, you and I've been there. Okay, so I tell people, yeah, buy them and sell them, but don't fix them. Just buy them and sell them. All right, give us a couple of minutes on what you recommend a new listener. I just started this podcast some weeks ago and really happy to have you as one of my original guests. Tell people what they should do a lot about business. Tell them about business, easy, tough, whatever it is, and what they should be thinking about doing. You, you're a good advisor. Well, I, don't, I don't know how great advisor I am, but I'll, I'll let you know my thoughts. Anytime I get into anything, it's 110%. So I'm very thorough. And I think people need to take the time. They need to look around. It took me a little while to figure out Georgia was good for me. I went to a bunch of Florida auctions, online auctions, researched a bunch of other stuff. Take your time, figure out where you want to research and and get better every time you do it. I have a a routine every single auction. And every time I see something needs to be changed or added, it changes for the next auction. My routine is different this month than it was the month before. So Just always get better and better at what you're doing and pay attention to what's going on around you in order to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's nice. Now, this is very self-serving. I'm going to ask you a question. Did you have a coach by chance? I did. You did? I I had Bob as my coach. Yes, sir. Tell us about coaching, how it helps you, how it makes you work harder, or whatever it is, whatever you want to say about coaching, say that, and and, uh, I'm going to play it back to Bob. I'm joking. I'm joking. (laughs) It was, it's very reassuring knowing that you have a coach to go back to. Um, I reach out or have reached out to Bob a lot when I'm in the heat of the auction, whether it's a, the night before or the couple of days before. When I'm needing information, he's right there and I can get the answer that I need and I can move on. Coach has been a big help along the way. And it's like I said, it's very reassuring knowing you have that person to go back to. Last thing I want to do is come in here and make a, a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar mistake. Uh, that's a nice thing to say. Thank you. I'll definitely play that back to him because he'll love to do. But I think Bob's going to be. I'm going to say ten years. He's going to say twenty. Probably seems like twenty. But anyway, he's been with me a long time. He's a great <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. How, how about your family? They love. Do they like you doing this business? They do. My wife. She is extremely helpful. Very supportive. She sits out and helps me do the researching prior to the wow. auction. Wow. Yep. She. My daughter. She. She's really into it. She, she asked me when I, when I got back, she said, so how'd it go? Did you get, did you get some properties? I said, I only got one. She said, oh my gosh. She did not. Oh, she <laughs> yeah, did. She, she wants me to do more than one, so, but they're crazy supportive and very helpful. I understand why you're a good person. Jeff, thank you very much. Terrific interview. I, I enjoyed it more than you did, but thanks for taking your time with us. And I'm looking forward to you telling me that you're going to come back and teach you at one of my events when you have time. All right. Sounds good, Ted. I, I expect I'll probably be at the next one. All right. I'll look forward to seeing you, and thanks you again. You're terrific interview. Thank right. you.